Okay, for our first video review here at Decrypted Tech, what we're going to take a look at is Main Gear's Epic 180 water cooling system. This is the same water cooling system that you'll find in all of their shift and quantum shift systems. First thing that you'll notice is that the radiator is much larger than what you would find in other models that you could purchase on the open market or even ones that come as a, sort of a custom design. Doing a direct comparison with Corsair's H70, you'll see that Main Gear's uh, design here is about twice as large. It's actually a little bit more than twice as large as far as fin area. In order to compensate for the smaller size, what Corsair and many other manufacturers have done is they've actually made the radiator thicker. This does give you a little bit more surface area, but in order to take advantage of this surface area, you end up running this in a push-pull configuration with two fans. What this does is it actually concentrates the air through the center, and you miss out on cooling all of these corners, which actually reduces the amount of the surface area you're, you're contacting with air significantly. So you'll find that these, especially under high heat conditions, are going to stop cooling efficiently and you'll end up with a thermal breakdown at some point, much lower than you would with a smaller design. Now this unit was designed in cooperation with Coolit, but it is Main Gear specification. It's their design. Uh, it's actually patented by Main Gear. What they've done is they've gone with a thinner radiator, much larger, to allow this to actually pass air much more efficiently. The housing on it is also designed specifically. You'll notice that the shroud is actually set off at an angle. This allows the fan, instead of blowing directly on there, to force the air in at an angle. It actually prevents that same core effect that we see in the Corsair and many other designs and allows it to cool efficiently across all of the fins. Now again, due to its size, this is not something that you're going to see thrown into the back of a case. It just isn't going to fit. So what Main Gear has done is they've actually taken this and they put it in the center of the shift in a horizontal uh, position like this, the fan is still underneath there and it pushes the air up through following again their same thermal design where they want to push the hot air up through the case instead of forcing it down through the bottom or back out the back. At this point the, the head will actually turn and will mount to the board this way. Now speaking about the head, what they've done here is they've actually made it much thinner than many of the other designs out there, but they've also made it square or rectangular. This allows you to, to put it on something like an Intel's new Core i7, the 3960, and still maintain good surface, air, surface contact across that much larger CPU. This particular model is designed just for Intel units, and it will fit everything down to 1156, 1155, 1366, and of course the uh, 2011 LGA sockets. One of the things you want to make sure of when this is being mounted is the direction of the input and the uh, output hoses. These need to be either facing towards the RAM slots or away from the RAM slots. Of course, if you're using a 2011 board, it doesn't matter because the RAM is going to be on either side. If you place them north and south, like this, what you end up with is that these will cause the head to pull away slightly, especially on an 1155 or an 1156 motherboard, and that will prevent good surface contact and you'll end up running out of uh, cooling power. So now, speaking of the fan, the fan that Main Gear has chosen is a, is a Silverstone. SST AP181. This fan is a little bit different. It does come with a switch that allows you to turn the fan, you know, increase this fan speed or lower the fan speed. On its lowest setting, it is you cannot hear it. I mean, it's just not there. On its even its highest setting, it's still pretty much whisper quiet. It requires a three-pin connector. It's not a four-pin, so you actually control the fan speed through here. This is the same thing with the cooling head. It's going to be a three-pin connector. It doesn't use any of the extra fan controls. In fact, if you're running this on any of the boards such as ASUS or Gigabyte, your best bet is going to be to turn off any QFAN or any fan expert controls and just allow it to run at full power. Now, speaking of uh, other mounts, and we talked about 1155 and 1156. Main Gear does have a bracket for those. This will allow it to fit that. And unlike many others where you have to find the, the sweet spot in order to get everything in there, this bracket slides back and forth very easily, which allows it to, to hook up much on a much simpler manner. So that's pretty. That's it in a nutshell. Let's go ahead and get it hooked up and see how it cools. We'll be putting this on our Gigabyte G1 Assassin 2 with Intel's 3960 and we'll see uh, how well it cools. We'll also be comparing this to the Corsair H70 as well as to Intel's included, their new water cooling kit that they included with the 3960. So let's get it all mounted up and see how it does. Okay, now we've moved over to our G1 Assassin 2 motherboard and we're going to go ahead and get everything mounted up. Now, Main Gear has actually included some nice mounting hardware here. And thanks to the new socket design, it's going to be pretty easy to get everything hooked up. Simply mount 
four of these uh, mounting screws in there and they'll fit one in each hole if I can get it in here and that will make everything easy to connect so once all four of those are in there then we just add some thermal paste to make sure that we've got everything set up this is uh, some arctic silver courtesy of acoustic PC so they sent this over to us now we'll go ahead and make sure we place the head and again keeping in mind that we're going to make sure that we have the intake and output hoses lined up with our ram and you take the thumb screws they fit down there easily you know each one of these does have a nice uh, standard socket in, or standard cut in there so you can tighten these down if you can't get them tightened by hand or if they're too deep in a case and you can't reach it makes it very nice to put in there so get these four hooked up And there you have it. Like I said, very easy to mount. Once they're down and tight, you've got very good contact across the entire CPU. And you're all set. You just want to plug this in to the CPU fan slot. And again, make sure that you've turned off any Q fan or fan expert or any kind of fan profiles. You want the fan blowing full blast throughout the entire thing. So, now that we've got it all hooked up, we'll go ahead and start some testing and we'll see just exactly what this can do. Maybe it'll allow us to get a little bit higher on our overclock than we have before.